All right, Max, it is week number eight. Yes, it is. Week well, number eight! <laughs> Welcome to Throwdown, guys. This is where we invite all of you to do a workout with our Training Think Tank community. We're trying to prep you for qualifier style workouts. So let's get right to it. We're gonna go out to the floor and introduce the workout. All right, this week's Throwdown. 10 minute running clock, 500 meter row for time. At the three minute mark, seven minute AMRAP, five deads, 315 or 220. The scale for this is 70% of your one rep max. So if it's just too heavy to do the workout with this, just load that at 70%. Then. We have 10 foot segments. So you'll do a 10 foot handstand walk in the first round, back to the deads, five deadlifts. Then you're gonna go down and back and do two 10 foot segments. So each handstand round or handstand walk round adds 10 feet of walking. 10, 20, 30, 40, et cetera, till you finish. For the scale here, wall walks. So one wall walk, two wall walks, three wall walks. If you're gonna do wall walks, try to keep your positions tight so that it's transferring to actually making your body line better as opposed to just like jumping up the wall and jumping back down to a plank. Heat one, we're gonna go at 10.35. Heat two, somewhere between 11 and 11.05. Questions? Just 10 feet so we're kicking down at the end. Yeah, so your hands behind the line and then you gotta show control past the line on the other side. So 10 feet, then when you come down, you turn around and come back. But it has to be unbroken. So 10 feet, 20 feet would be two 10 foot segments unbroken. Every 10 feet, Every 10 feet has to be unbroken. Yeah, always. All right guys, we got a special giveaway this week. We're gonna be handing out two Yeti tumblers with a TTT brand on it. Here's how you win. Film yourself and two of your friends on Instagram, hashtag TTTTD8, and we'll pick two lucky winners. Good luck. All right, yep, yep. Pick two randomly just to, or Jesus, man, this is really hard. And then we will pick two and I'll just, Keep messing up that last part. Um, and I don't know how to end that. Tag us, hashtag TTTTDD. All right, guys, we got a giveaway this week. We're gonna be handing out two of these Yeti, these Yeti, I don't know, it's hard to say that. All right, guys, we, <laughs> cut, ready. All right, guys, cut. Jeez, man. We're gonna be handing out two of these Yeti tumblers with the TTT brand on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is way harder, man. And we'll pick two random winners. God bless it. You're making me nervous by strolling around. Okay. All right, guys. I'm yelling. All right, guys, before we get to the demo with Lucas Parker this week, what we wanted to do is talk about this concept of separation value in workouts again. And we're gonna give you guys a couple ideas of where you can separate yourself most in this workout with either placing or time on the workout. So Max, give us an idea yeah. of what you did. So I'll start with the row and then I'll throw it to you for the handstand walk Metcon portion since yeah. I didn't complete that. <laughs> uh, but I think the first thing is that with a workout like this, it's easy retroactively. So if you look back at the leaderboard of something like 18.2, you can always look at the scores and see what makes sense to put your energy into. But when you're first doing a workout, you don't really know where the scores are gonna line up and how people are gonna approach it. So with a workout like this, you gotta take some risks. And I'd say it's best to select a range that you think relative to your 500 meter row yeah. PR pace. Uh, I think three to five seconds off your PR pace, if you're somebody who's like really, really aerobic and your 500 1K, 2K is like really close together, maybe closer to your 500 meter PR pace. And if you're somebody who like, can sell out crazy on a 500 but will be wrecked forever, then maybe five seconds away from your PR. And you gotta kinda take the risk looking at the workout to say, all right, if I go really hard here, how much can I capitalize on the leaderboard with this row portion without wrecking myself in that second AMRAP portion? Kinda look at what your strengths and weaknesses are relative to handstand walking and deadlifting coming after yeah. it. I think one of the challenges with this is people see the 500 meter row almost everyone's done one before, they know how painful it is. So then they always pull back more than they should, thinking that it's gonna really affect the Metcon, which it does obviously. Yeah. But let's assume that this was an open style workout where there's 200,000 people on the leaderboard, one or two seconds could be hundreds and hundreds of spots. Yeah. So you do have to be a little bit more aggressive than you want to. And then like you said, self-awareness is such a huge part of this. We were just talking about this before we got on camera. I have an athlete here that basically she could PR her 500 meter and in 90 seconds be okay, just she's very aerobic and is able to get back on, um, you know, do a Metcon or whatever it is. Yeah. Whereas 
there are others that like if you try to PR your 500 meter, you'd I be blown up. Lay down on so the floor for So you have minutes. to know what type of athlete you are and then plan accordingly, but still probably be more aggressive than you want to be. Yeah, I think, I mean, the reason we're doing this is to give people practice in yeah. doing qualifiers, but there's no pressure because we're not actually, exactly. there's no real leaderboard. So I'd say when you're doing these types of workout, always test your limits and be a little bit more aggressive than you feel comfortable doing. Just step out of your comfort zone a tiny bit, but try to pick that range for yourself so that if you are in the middle of the 500 meter row and you're like, wow, that pace I selected was way, way, way too hot, you have a little bit of a range to fall back on when you're going through, it, through yeah. the workout. And so the second one is handstand walking. So obviously the deadlift is heavy and that can be a separator for those that are just really good hingers and those that are not. But the majority of the time is spent going back and forth, especially since it's only 10 feet at a time yeah. on the handstand walk. Where do you see people making up time there? Yeah, so I think it's two things. One is just speed maintenance. Yeah. When people's backs are starting to get tight from deadlifting or they're just like breathing really heavy from a 500 meter row, people's coordination starts to break down and they're actually taking like slow steps where they're almost falling back or falling forward and going back to their feet, not able to do those 10 feet segments unbroken or they cross the line, then they turn around and they rest for a period of time and then, and then turn and go. If you can figure out some sort of a cadence to either like lock in your transition time, like all right, I'm giving myself five to 10 seconds to transition on a handstand walk, or when you're fresh, handstand walk, cross the line, turn around, kick up and go, and basically try to find your threshold throughout the workout, I think you can save a, a ton of time on the handstand walking segments. Yeah, transitions again are always key in most workouts, but especially this where the segments are short, so 10 feet goes by pretty fast, even if you're going slow. Yeah. So kick down and be disciplined on the clock, like pick a number like you said, and get right back to it. And take some risks. Again, yeah. this is a, a test, but it's also practice of the more important test later on if the open comes up or you're doing a sanctional qualifier. So take some chances, chances, excuse me, and if you fall, you learn from it, right? Like that's kind of the idea here. Yep. So those are the major separators. Now we're gonna watch the demo and try to reference back those uh, to see where Lucas took advantage of them or maybe where he made some mistakes in his execution. And we have begun. Lucas Parker. Look at that beard. <laughs> it's so yeah, impressive. It's so impressive. It's really amazing that he can shave that off and then it just like grows me. all the way back. Yeah, yeah. have you ever seen the movie Santa Claus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just grows in one day. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, uh, you shouldn't admit that publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so ten minutes, a ten minute clock. Yeah, zero to three, five hundred meter row for time. That's one score, and then at the three minute mark, it's a seven minute AMRAP of deadlifts and ascending uh, handstand walks and feet. Yeah, so I'm actually uh, counting for and judging Mia, and so I was behind and watching Lucas's pace. He was hovering around a 125 to 127 uh, for this first portion of it. I don't know how long it's been, probably been about 30 to 45 seconds right yeah. now. Um, and then his strategy must have been that he'd pick it up to finish at the end, which I actually like energy-wise better. I know I picked the opposite strategy and went out fast and then tried to throttle back. And it's just, it's hard to kind of throttle back as you're under fatigue, but it's kind of easy when you know the finish line is coming. You can even just see him being a little bit more aggressive here to finish his pulls. Yeah. Um, I feel like potentially, he finished, I think his score was 125.6 or 7 no, or something 25. like that. Um, his overall capacity on this, he must have went out with that as a plan for himself because I think he had a little bit more in the tank had he wanted to like push this another two or three seconds, he probably could have. But again, athletes, they got to take that risk for themselves and figure out what the, the primary strategy for themselves to maximize points are. Yeah. Um, I think there, there's really two ways that you can do this. And I know you mentioned these, but just kind of reiterate for those that are prepping for this workout. You can either pace at the beginning and then try to kick it in with 200 meters left, 250, whatever your body type is. Or you start out around your PR pace. And then as soon as you get to that like eight and a half or nine RPE out of 10, that's when you pull back. Yeah. And not you're not pulling back by 20 seconds, but you're just pulling back enough to kind of save something for the, the rest of the workout, which everyone's, it's in the back of their mind, right? Yeah. Like I got a seven minute AMRAP with deadlifts in it after this. But I, I prefer going out hot and then holding on just because I find even for people that do pace well, if you overpace at the beginning, you can't ever pick it back up as fast as you think yeah. you can, so. I find it interesting that Lucas had the, of, of that heat, the best row and was on the rower resting yeah. at the end the longest. And he kind of just like walked up to his bar, got ready to go like right at the three minute. <laughs> 
He looked like he wasn't ready to he, ready to do it yet. He knows himself. Yeah. He, he knew when he had to get up. Yeah. All right, so seven minute AMRAP, five deads. They got about 15 seconds. The clock just showed there a little bit. Five deads and then handstand walk increasing from 10 feet, adding 10 feet every round. Let's see. I was watching Luke a little bit, but I was over judging Mia. His, uh, his deadlift positions from the side, he's a monster. Yeah, so Just, good. Yeah, great hinge. And one thing I like about him is he pulls the bar pretty fast. I mean, that those five deads were nine-ish seconds, maybe eight seconds. Um, and his arms stay completely straight. So even though they're still like, I think that's one of those standards in CrossFit where I'm like, I'm very unsure how they yeah. can say don't bounce it if you're lowering it down to the ground, but his arms stay straight and those are like legitimate quality non-arm recoil reps. This is a good profile view. Yeah. You see his positions are great. Yeah. Keeps the bar tight to his body too, which I think as people get heavier, they start getting too far forward and blows yeah. their backs up that way too. Yeah. He's interesting too. I mean, some one of the things we talked about, and you could see his handstand walking speed. I wish there was some reference point down the line. Maybe we'll get some, like as Mia's going, you can see even just in these 10 feet segments, just being able to kick up and move your hands quickly. That's one of those handstand walk speed things that you can take advantage of. You can either use it like Lucas is here to build yourself some rest time, or you can use it to just like continually move and just take advantage of like racing quickly. Yeah, the, so like if this came out in a qualifier and it's only 10 feet, what I would tell an athlete that is decent at handstand walking is literally it's a controlled fall. Like it's, yeah. it's their version of a sprint because 10 feet, you know, that's only, you know, five or six steps at most with their hands and then they're on the other side. So it's okay to be a little bit more reckless, um, kick up a little bit faster than you think and then let your feet fall forward a little bit farther than you would typically do if it's like 50 feet unbroken yeah. or whatever it may be. Yeah. It keeps the speed fast. And then the other thing too is it obviously builds in the time, like you said, for the deadlift. Yeah. This is a, it's kind of interesting of a format because in the beginning, the handstand walks are so short and condensed, you're not doing that many of them. It's almost like you pull all of the, on a rower, you're kind of just like deadlifting, yep. like a 500 meter row is like a lot of in place deadlifts. Then you get off, you have 90 seconds of rest, you're kind of messed up and you're deadlifting, then a quick walk, deadlifting, quick walk, deadlifting. And so in the beginning, it's very deadlift heavy. And then as it starts to spread out into the later rounds, it becomes really handstand walk heavy. But I think because of that, the handstand walk becomes the bigger separator, yes. the, the speed there in those later rounds where it's, you know, 50 feet of handstand walking going down and back and down and back. Uh, that's where the real separation yeah. happens in this one. Well, I told Allie, one of the athletes that uh, went in the first heat, she's one of my athletes, I said, just know that the majority of the deadlifts are gonna be done in the first two minutes of this, and then it's just handstand walking, like you said. Yeah. And so for her, she's pretty good at deadlifting. Handstand walks need to continue to improve with her speed. But I was like, she go, go hot on the deadlifts and just yeah. really push the handstand walks, and you can obviously, you'll get more rest built in when you're doing 50, 60, 70 feet. Yeah. So that's something for people to think about when they're doing this. Like, yeah, your back's gonna be a little more fatigued in the earlier part of this workout than the later part. Yeah. So here's a reference point of handstand walk speed. Mia, she just went off the screen, but you'll see her throughout. She actually has pretty stacked positions, pretty tight body line relative to most people, but the speed relative to people who are like uh, higher level in the sport at just handstand walking, the speed itself is slower. So you're on tension, under tension on your hands for longer just to go 10 feet. And you have you know more likelihood to fall because your center of mass, instead of being in a less optimal gymnastics body line where your legs are pulling you forward, so you're kind of falling forward. She's more stacked and in place and balanced, but that means you're balanced and you're able to almost fall in all four yeah. directions because your center of gravity is more stacked and vertical. Um, so that's something that people gotta, I think, take into consideration that handstand walking, like as a skill, if you're trying to improve body line coordination and like overall movement quality, you can probably have these tight body lines, but having the some sort of a way to get your center of gravity forward is necessary if you want to handstand walk fast. Correct. That I, kind of scorpion type posture. It, this is what we talked about last week with the Olympic lifting and like not coming to extension on lighter yeah. loads. Yeah. It's the same thing. It may not be ideal, but it is more efficient for the, a sport where it is for time or for as many reps as possible, which is, that's the sport we're playing. Yeah. 
So we had score, or we're gonna give a little bit of score predictions and show the rest of the on-site crew. We're ba both of us based that estimation on just doing some math on how how long does the, do these actually reps take, and then from standing here and watching, just like these rest breaks here. So we got yep. into the later portion of the workout. It becomes you know six or seven back and forth segments of handstand walking, and then you can just see like maybe we can get a clock reference or, or count even. Um, how long these rest breaks would be. So that was somewhere between like eight and 10 seconds, I'm guesstimating. If somebody is able to do those in three seconds where they just kick down on the line and then turn around and handstand walk, you do that on six transitions, you've already made up 18 potential seconds, which yeah. is another 10 or 20 feet of walking depending on how fast you walk. So those tiny, tiny details are the separators, even amongst the elite. I mean, this is an elite athlete who's competed at sanctional, six-time games athlete. So even if he has a workout where he's not at the, the top of the performance sphere in just this one workout, his performance on the workout is still gonna be good and in the top one percentile. But for everybody else, that separation is gonna be even wider. So these rest breaks for him maybe are 10 seconds, but for somebody who's a little bit less skilled, it's gonna be 20 seconds or 30 seconds. So those are really the focus point cues that we think people need to focus on if they wanna go faster in the workout. It's like, you gotta really consciously think about, okay, every time you kick down, put a clock in your head or you know, start to figure out for yourself, how long do you actually need to rest before you kick back up and start to take split times on yourself. Like Lucas's 10 feet of walking seems to have stayed pretty constantly yeah. fast. He actually, out. I was standing over in the corner where I could kind of see him from the side and his, his walking speed actually increased over the rounds. So yeah. he got faster and faster in the 10 feet. His rest breaks just got a little bit longer. Yeah. I mean, that, so that's the big thing, right? Like some athletes are just intuitive. I think probably the best in the sport are just kind yeah. of feeling it out and then, okay, I'm ready to go. For most of us though in our training, and especially in environments like this, we need to kind of start putting ourselves on clocks to see where we're actually at. I think yeah. we lie to our, our brains kind of lie to our bodies yeah. in that, oh, I need longer, but take some risks on this and see how fast, you can kick up and do 10 feet a lot faster than most people think, especially if you're somewhat efficient at handstand walking. Yeah, yeah, so Luke's, you know, he's obviously not gonna work on handstand speed as his separator, right. but if he's gonna go after that, it's gonna be rest breaks, I think really for him, after watching this more uh, more closely now, it's the rest break when he's finishing the walks and getting to the deads where he's like probably giving away the most time relative to the people that he'd be chasing on yeah, this workout. I agree. Um, but overall, I thought that was a pretty solid execution. That's a good demo for people to watch and get a reference point and kind of understand where we come at, came up with those separator concepts to begin with. All right, so you just watched Lucas do the demo. We got scores from the rest of the onsite crew here. For scoring for the AMRAP, each 10 feet of the handstand walking is equal to one rep. So as an example, if you finish round three, you have 21 total reps. If you finish round six, you have 51 total reps. Just basically take the number of feet in that round, divide it by 10, and that's how many reps you're doing that's equivalent for handstand walking. For the men, our fastest row time was a 121.1, .1, and our fastest AMRAP, or the, the best score for the AMRAP, was 59 reps, which means finishing round six, finishing the deadlifts of round seven, and finishing some of the handstand walking in this round seven. We think that the potential on this workout from the people that can get the best score on this specific workout would be somewhere close to finishing round eight or getting into the beginning of round nine. We think that the best row scores for the males will probably be in the 118 to 119 range. We know some people can probably row faster than that, but maybe not in the format where you gotta do the row and then get less than 90 seconds of rest and go into the AMRAP. For the females, we had a little bit of a smaller sample sizing today, but our best row time was a 137.7, and then our best AMRAP score was 51 reps, which is completing round six. We think that the scores for men and women on this workout at an absolute level will be pretty close to the same. So again, finishing around round eight or maybe getting into round nine. And we think that the row potential for females probably be in the, one, in the low 130s, maybe somewhere between a 131 and 134, depending on height and weight of the athlete. So when you're prepping for this workout, we wanna give you guys a couple keys that you can put in your toolbox. Max? Yeah, I think the first is a 500 meter row is super intense. And what I saw when we were out there is a lot of people were really focused on the deadlift and the handstand walk because those are like the heavy weight or the most complex movement. But 
you need to really prep your metabolic system yeah. appropriately for that type of output. Everyone's done a 500 meter row, like yeah. you said, or something fast in the row, and yeah. you, know, you know how it feels, so just make sure that you're ready for that. Yeah, so extensive rowing warm up, and then extensive bracing warm up as well. I know for, I pulled my first deadlift and was like, oh, this is unsafe right yeah. now, so I had to scale and change the workout for myself, but I think, potentially maybe for people to prevent that is go through a bracing sequence as well. So we actually have in the description a an extensive rowing into a bracing warm up so that your hinge pattern can get warmed up because really the rowing and the deadlift are really just two hinge movements and then the only other movement in the workout is a handstand walk. So why don't you cover what they can do for the handstand walk? Yeah, so what I would do for this is practice the day before or today when you get this workout, set up 10 feet and then practice the speed that you can hold throughout a workout. Like assume that you're tired and a seven minute AMRAP and say, okay, what? how fast can I actually transition into this walk? And then how fast can I actually walk the 10 feet? It's much different than 25 in that you can you really can just kind of fall forward as I said in the demo yeah. in like kind of trust yourself to just get over the line. Obviously, you have to be controlled, but it's a little bit faster than a 25-foot segment. Yeah, I think some people are used to a 25-foot segment, but a lot of people in that 25-foot segment for qualifiers are also used to doing five-feet segments yeah. under fatigue. So making sure that you're confident doing a 10-foot segment, and then even little things like just turning around and and having your resting posture be in one where you can kick up and go into the next thing. So a lot of people, they handstand walk, and then they would just like kick down and rest where they are, and then take their rest, then stand up, turn around, and then kick up, which adds like three or four seconds yeah. to the transition. So just think about those little details with regards to execution of the handstand walk transitions. So as far as execution goes in the actual workout, the big things would be Pick a row pace that's yep. within three to five seconds of your PR. If you are very aerobic and that won't blow you up as much, you probably can go close to your PR yeah. pace. If you're someone that knows they're gonna blow up, then pull it back a little bit. But still, this is an opportunity for you to kind of test yourself. So go a little bit hotter than you think and then see where you end up and then talk to your coach about it. That's something that you can do. And then for the handstand walks, transitions. Yeah, right? I think transition time is like, most people aren't gonna speed their handstand walking up in a two day period, but you can definitely work on transitions from walk to walk and transition from walk to dead and from deadlift to walk for sure good luck guys it's gonna be a fun workout this week I can't wait to see some 500 meter road times I hope someone beats Kyle L's time Me because too. that was pretty hot yeah that was good um, yeah so that's everything for the workout some final wrap-up stuff uh, design is our online training program that is finishing up phase one and phase one is our first eight weeks of training if you want to follow along and train with us you can try that seven days for free at design or trainingthinktank.com and then click on design um, we're in the middle of a games prep week so we got a bunch of games athletes on site and then some of our other on-site athletes it's been a lot of fun uh, and we'll have another one in july yeah for sure i had to costa rica on sunday uh, busy with Mike, weeks for you. <laughs> yeah, with Mike and Evan, which would be cool. And then we've had a bunch of questions about like either comments about like I wish I could be coached by you guys, but I'm not at high enough level because we're always demonstrating people that are at yeah. a pretty high level, um, or people asking about what our one-on-one -on -one coaching process is like. You can get more information on that on our website as well, trainingthinktank.com. Click on coaching, or you can in email us info at trainingthinktank.com, and we can get you some info on that. Good luck, guys. Crush it. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata!